In the last couple of years, I've been playing through a bunch of retro games, and I wanted something to experience handheld games the way that they were intended to be played. There are devices available on the market that I could have just purchased, but where's the fun in that? Why buy something when I can design a build it myself? I'd like to introduce you to Astro, an open source retro gaming handheld based on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano single board computer. I chose the Jetson Nano because it's powerful, I didn't see that anyone had built a handheld around it yet, and I already had one lying around. I wanted to clean out my junk drawer a little, so the design uses mostly off-the-shelf parts and 3D printed parts that fit on the bed of a moderately sized 3D printer. This is the result of nearly a year's worth of work. I designed the 3D printed case and buttons, and also the gamepad controller printed circuit boards. The Astro features D-pad and face buttons that use Super Nintendo controller membranes, and they have a good feel to me. The joysticks are switch style and click in for L3 and R3, and there are four function buttons, start and select on the right, and menu and turbo buttons on the left. I wanted the device to be comfortable to hold for long game sessions, so I went through a bunch of revisions to get the control layout and shape just right for my hands. I plan on playing mostly older systems on this, so I put the D-pad on top and inset the joysticks below, which makes it comfortable to reach these and the shoulder buttons at the same time. The display size is 5 inches with a resolution of 800 by 480 This is a lot of flexibility for game systems that it can emulate, and I don't mind the black borders for 4x3 systems. On the top we have stacked shoulder buttons that use micro switches, so they're clicky but with a light touch. The headphone jack is only mono audio because that's what I had in the junk drawer, and I usually only have one earbud in at a time when I'm gaming after work and my wife is watching TV. There's no built-in speaker because I don't like to disturb people around me and I never use it. There's also a USB host port for file transfers or connecting a mouse and keyboard and the output cooling vent. On the bottom we have the USB-C charging port for the 37 watt hour battery, the power indicator, power switch, and cooling fan intake. The Nano generates a lot of heat under load, so there's a small cooling fan and vents for good airflow. Inside is a Jetson Nano with a quad-core ARM processor overclocked to 2 GHz and an integrated GPU with 128 CUDA cores. It has 4 GB of RAM, 250 GB of flash storage, and I've enabled the real-time clock battery backup. I've also added Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth module. The software is the Ares OS from Tech Toy Tinker with a lightly customized Epic Noir theme. The Jetson Nano Carrier module is unmodified, including the huge heatsink, so the whole thing is thick with four C's at 40 millimeters, but the housing halves can each be printed in one piece on a 3D printer with a 220 millimeter bed. Let's check out some emulation performance. There's more than enough power for low-end systems like NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Game Boy Advance, and PlayStation. These all run great at the low power 5 watt TDP setting. I added a menu option to change the TDP between three settings, 5 watt, 10 watt with scaling on demand, and max, which is 10 watts with the CPU and GPU clocks always at maximum. At the 10 watt setting, the Astro has no problem emulating Panzer Dragoon on the Sega Saturn, GoldenEye 007 on the N64, God of War Chains of Olympics on the PSP, and Daytona USA on the Dreamcast. There's even enough headroom to emulate most of these upscaled to 2x resolution, sometimes more. GameCube emulation is good but not complete. Super Mario Sunshine runs great, and F-Zero GX is so close to being playable, but it never gets to full speed. I expect to be able to run a good portion of the GameCube catalog, but clearly not everything. It'll also run some PS2 games. Using Ether SX2, Ratchet & Clank is playable, but there are some slowdowns when the scene is detailed. Games like Automotilista and GTA Vice City play great. With a 37 watt hour battery, runtime is 5-6 to six hours for less demanding emulation like NES, Genesis, and even PlayStation using Duck Station and the 5 watt TDP limit. More demanding systems require bumping up the TDP to 10 watts, and this cuts the runtime to about 3 hours for N64 and Dreamcast emulation, and a little under 2.5 hours for GameCube emulation. With how power hungry the Nano is, and how little power optimization there is in the system as a whole, this is honestly better than I expected. I'm not an all-day gamer, so anything more than a couple hours suits me great. I've beaten a few games on the Astro as part of testing, and overall, I'm really happy with it. It fits my hands and my playstyle really well. But I know the design is not for everyone and has some odd shortcomings due to my design choices. It's missing an external speaker, it only has slow 2-amp charging, no display brightness control, and no external volume controls, though volume can be adjusted in a software menu. It's also missing analog triggers that some GameCube games would be able to take advantage of. Most of these changes can be incorporated with a little more work, and since I've open sourced the design, maybe someone in the community will run with it. I'm going to play with this for a few years and probably keep updating it. 
If you're interested in building your own, there are software and electronic design details at my GitHub and 3D printer files at Printables. You can find the links to these in the video description. I'm working on a longer build video to detail my design journey and the details of how everything is hooked up inside, so watch my channel for that. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.